Hello, I'm Andrew Corbett. Welcome to Jeremiah part 44. We're in chapter 17, verse 11. Treasures of false confidence. So we're in Jeremiah chapter 17. We're only going to look at one verse. And that is verse 11. And we're going to ponder this. It's a, a, a powerful thought that Jesus made several times and it's worth us pondering this as well today. Like the partridge that gathers a brood that she did not hatch, or he, uh, so is he who gets riches, but not by justice. In the midst of his days, they will leave him, and at his end, he will be a fool. It's a, a very easy verse just to pass over, and I guess I want to make this a bit of an exercise for us just to ponder this verse and meditate a little bit on this verse. The partridge gathers a brood that she did not hatch. Now, isn't this a fascinating thing? The partridge is a kind of a weird bird in that it will do, it's known for doing two things. One, it will, it will look for eggs that have been laid that are not being hatched and it will gather those eggs to its own nest, roll those eggs to its own nest and, and, and try and hatch those eggs. That's one thing it'll do. The other thing it'll do is it will look for uh, eggs that have recently hatched, so where you have chicks in the nest, and it will come along and it will take the chicks out of the nest and it will bring it back to its own kind of ground nest and, and pretend to be the mother of those chicks. And it will gather these chicks and... Uh, of course, what, what happens is either the real mother finds out or the chick realises and leaves the nest and goes in search of its, its own nest and its own mother. Now, you see the picture here Jeremiah is giving. He's, he's actually saying, essentially taking this picture of what a partridge does and says there are some people who live their lives like this. They're gathering things that are not theirs. They're trying to pretend that something that they claim is theirs really is theirs when in fact it never was in the first place. Now Jeremiah has a, a very strong word and it's not a word that I would use lightly and I don't think Jeremiah is using it lightly and we're going to see that he's not the only one that used it. But really what he's saying is that a fool will gather other people's treasures. A fool will gather other people's treasures. Um, there, are, there are some people that look to money or wealth as their security. They look to gather wealth. Here the prophet says that they do it unjustly. In other words, they're gathering someone else's money. They're perhaps stealing, extorting, defrauding to get that money. They're taking shortcuts to get that money. They're doing whatever it takes to get that money. That, Jeremiah says, will cause them to, at the end of that verse it says, in the end they will be a fool. In the end they will be a fool. Now, Jeremiah is addressing the whole nation of Israel here. Israel had a sense that we are God's people. And we can tell we're God's people because we're blessed. Look at us. We're prospering. We have a display of wealth. We must be blessed. Israel had prized the wrong things. And the question is, do we? Do we? Jesus warned Israel against prizing the wrong things. He did it over and over and over. Remember in the Beatitudes, he says, don't, don't lay up treasures here on earth. Lay up treasures where? In heaven, toward God. Where moth and rust, they don't eat it up there. Lay up treasure for yourself in heaven. Now, Here's, here's an interesting thought that Jesus also 
and we'll, we'll go to this in a moment, but Jesus taught this, how to love people and use things. And don't we live in a culture that loves things and uses people? And I don't want to be a church like that. And as slick as we could get, I don't know if that's what slick is, we're not going there. And if we can just love people, love people. In Luke chapter 12, verse 15, Jesus tells us to be on guard. It's worth noting what he says to be on guard against. You see, riches can be utterly deceitful. It can place a, a confidence in the wrong thing that when you're tested, you'll find that your riches are not the very thing that will deliver you or get you through or last. And Jesus is saying, be on your guard. Watch and be prayerful about this. And here Jeremiah is warning the people that they were trusting in their own reserves, their own wealth, their own reason for being confident. The very thing they were trusting in, the prophet Jeremiah is going to tell them, is the very thing that will be taken from them. It won't last. Therefore, you need to make sure that you're trusting in the right thing. This is the message that Jeremiah had for his people, and it's a message just as relevant for today. Of course, you can make money or God by pining that you don't have enough. You can make money or God by holding on to it for your own glory. You can make money or God by always being critical of whenever there's a need and criticising people for not being good with their money and always having to ask others for it. But let's not live like partridges, gathering stuff that's not really going to last. That's what Jeremiah says. Come back with me to the text. We're in Jeremiah 17, 11. Like the partridge that gathers a brood that she did not hatch, so is he who gets riches, but not by justice. In the midst of his days, they will leave him, and at his end, he will be a fool. How should the Christian treat money and wealth in light of what the scripture warns, that it can be hazardous to our spiritual well-being? John Wesley said, earn as much as you can. Give as much as you can. Save as much as you can. And that's a great way to treat money. So here's the question. Are you rich toward God? That's the question Jesus posed. Be rich toward God. 